Hello, everyone, and welcome to RMD, All Things Aesthetics and Wellness Podcast with me, your host, Dr. Deborah Durst, and my co-host, Faraday Golombieski. Hey, guys. Faraday Golombieski, nurse practitioner here at Revitalize MD, and today we are talking about one of our favorite peptides. That is CJC 1295, and, um, and of course, we do pair that with epimoralin as well. And so we're going to talk about that because that's a growth hormone peptide. And so it's going to stimulate your own release of growth hormone in the body. So a much more natural physiologic way to optimize growth hormone in your body. And And we've been getting a lot of questions about this peptide Mm -hmm. in our comments. So that is what prompted us to do another one another podcast on this subject. So definitely um, your comments are being utilized. So please Mm -hmm. leave comments and we will direct podcasts towards your wants and needs. Yes, correct. So better to kind of maybe um, let you know who should be on it, who should consider it, you know, exactly um, the patient, the ideal patient for it, or at least what we consider the ideal patient in our patient population. So the bottom line is CJC 1295 is again growth hormone um, releasing hormone peptide and so it is growth hormone has 44 amino acids we are going to do a little science of it because um, we think that at this point if you're listening and following peptides you want to know you want to know a little bit more about the nitty-gritty yeah so 44 peptides and growth hormone releasing hormone and so this is just a shortened version of it so 29 amino acids and it's synthetic made to exactly simulate those 29 amino acid chains and growth hormone releasing hormone so growth hormone releasing hormone is in the pituitary and um or sorry it's in the hypothalamus and then it goes to the pituitary and releases growth hormone and then growth hormone goes to the liver and produces the effects by igf1 and so again how we're trying to do that protein synthesis yeah trying to kick start that your body to make its own growth hormone. Yeah, you're going to increase muscle mass, and you're basically increasing protein to increase muscle mass in the body. But it has all kinds of other effects too, not Absolutely. just muscle improvement. And again, we one question though before we even go further is, and again, I think Faraday probably answered this question because I did not have an answer in the office, and people would always ask what CJC stood for. And I just had never found anything. And we really couldn't find anything. All that we could find is that it was developed by a company called Conjuchem Biotechnologies or something like that. So CJC, Conjuchem, maybe. I think that could be. But that's the only thing that we could find that it might be because nothing populated. So if you know something different. Leave it in the comments. Leave it in the comments because that's all we could find because that is a frequent question. So just to answer that question. And again, we pair it with epimorlin and epimorlin is an negative. It inhibits the negative feedback to the pituitary so that or to the hypothalamus. So that basically you're inhibiting the negative feedback. So you get increasing release of growth hormone. So we're getting that spike and then we're keeping that spike. So Mm -hmm. we're prolonging that time in which the growth hormone spikes in the body. So you want it to mimic the body's natural response, which isn't straight up and then right back down. It's up and then, you know, a good 30 minute yeah, about 30 minute duration yeah, if we're lucky yeah. duration of a growth hormone release mm-hmm. and if you actually so again we don't do any dosing for anybody but our patients and so if you want one of the frequent questions is you know where can i get it who prescribes it internationally we've had people ask and again there's no international it, like you can't do it outside of a country for another mm-hmm. country but you also, um, you know, need to have a physician that is following you. Don't get these online. And so, again, just asking where you can get them in dosing. When we're talking about a 30-minute duration of CJC, which is simulating growth hormone releasing hormone duration, there's also they compare it with DAC, which is drug yes. affinity complex, which significantly changes that. So, again, if we don't know what you're taking – Um, You need to be prescribed. You need to have that prescribing physician or provider tell you what you're taking, how to reconstitute it, what the dose is. Because otherwise, you know, drug affinity complex is much longer. You know, that's days. And so therefore, we would be dosing that wrong. And so you need to find out what you're taking because your physician will end up prescribing that and specifically telling you how to reconstitute it, what the exactly. milligram strength, what the dose is, and all of the details. So 
Clearly, you need to be under a physician's care for any of the peptides for this reason, because just one little change in addition of something such as drug affinity complex, which prolongs the duration, that's not natural. That's mm-hmm. not the natural course of growth hormone releasing hormone That in the changes body. your risk. That changes mm-hmm. who would be an appropriate candidate or not. That changes a lot of... Um, a lot of steps on our end on what, how we would recommend. Yeah. So it is really important when you guys are listening um, because we do, we get patients that or people that comment in and say, Hey, how do I dose this? What do I do? How do I take it? How do I use it? But we don't know what you have. And if you're mm-hmm. getting from a, a, you know, a third party or you're buying something online or buying something overseas and having it shipped in or however else people come across these peptides, mm-hmm. You may not know exactly what you're injecting either. So it's really important to use a valid source. Correct. And prescribing instructions. And so basically, again, the reason that we don't use a product with DAC is because of the duration of action of DAC is not mimicking growth hormone, releasing hormone in the body. So we want physiologic effects because we think that is the best way to optimize your cell function and the the effects and the results. Absolutely. So we're increasing protein synthesis and muscle improvement. It decreases body fat. Helps with mental clarity. Yeah. Brain fog, like she said, Mm -hmm. and then energy, but also increases insulin sensitivity, you know, Mm -hmm. improves lipid panels. So things you don't think about. And we get a lot of questions about does it improve um, recovery? So if you've had an injury, there's a lot of questions of that sort either in phone calls or comments. And it does. It improves injury and improves um, recovery period. (laughs) However, there are other peptides that would be better suited Mm -hmm. for that type of um, condition. So there are a lot of different peptides out there that have that kind of may umbrella some things, right? They cover Mm -hmm. a large swath of symptoms that it can help treat, but there are some that are very specific to injury, recovery. Um, Mm -hmm. CJC 1295 uh, with ipamorlin does help with that, but when we see patients that have an acute injury or a chronic injury, we tend to go with a different peptide. um, Correct. Or Mm -hmm. in combination with, because peptides can be utilized together or stacked. And they can be stacked depending on what you what you want to accomplish, what your goals are. And so that's not an issue. But again, a lot of times when we're hormonally optimizing, this is the next step so that now we can optimize growth hormone where yes. before we could only give growth hormone. That was like the only option and it's not what we do. But this is more physiologic and now we can optimize growth yeah. hormone for men and women, which is like life-changing. And definitely for women, optimizing hormones and growth hormone can allow those body composition changes that yes. you want and you know decreasing fat and increasing um, muscle mass but also skin changes that happen with aging as well so it makes a big difference yeah, yeah. healthy hair mm-hmm. skin lots um, of dr durst talked about improving your lipid profile so um that's your cholesterol right or yeah. Our- yeah. insulin resistance. Um, it also can help with blood pressure as well. So it has a huge, uh, wide mm-hmm. variety of things it can benefit for. And I always say it's it's sort of like, I mean, it, opt- it does the same thing that testosterone optimization does, but better. And so yes. again, if growth hormone could be a drug, it'd be a perfect drug. It does all these great things and, and it would be a perfect drug, but there are some downsides to growth hormone if you're doing it directly. And those same things are going to apply sometimes to CJC 1295. It's more physiologic, but what are some reasons why you wouldn't want to be on um, CJC 1295? And one of the big ones is any active tumor or cancers. That is a huge reason not to take it because think about it. It's growth hormone that we're improving and so it could improve the growth of a tumor, a tumor. or a exactly. cancer. So. Or even possibly history of cancer, depending on what type of cancer it was and how aggressive it was. Um, it's always definitely something you want um, to let your provider know that is talking to you about peptides, that it is in your history so that they can talk to you about that and talk about the risks yes, and yeah. if you would be a candidate or not. Yes. Always consult with your primary physician with and you have multiple uh, medical problems definitely you want to loop them into anything that you're taking brain disorders or traumas is another one mm-hmm. that uh, may be a contraindication we're talking about um, 
the hypothalamus and the pituitary gland. So it's our damages to those portions of the brain. This may not be the best option for pregnancy, nursing. You know, we I don't mean, recommend any. Pregnancy. Yeah, we don't do Sorry, anything. Sorry, pregnant when, ladies. Yeah, it is <laughs> we not, give us nothing when we're pregnant or yeah, nursing. <laughs> no, and that's just across the board, and everyone yeah. knows that. And nursing, likewise, you know, lactation. We don't know what crosses, and everything's kind of in question. So you can't. And take nobody anything. wants to be a subject of that kind of testing. Yeah, no. So we just don't have that information. You could potentially increase blood sugars. You know, so definitely something that wants to be mo- that should be monitored. If, especially if you're a diabetic or have insulin resistance. Mm-hmm. Um, the the bottom line is that your growth hormone spikes are still present in the body, and so but they're just they're small. They're they're low frequency at this point, and it peaks at age twenty and then goes down after that. So we can increase spikes by increasing the growth hormone releasing hormone from the hypothalamus going to the pituitary. But again, you know they're there. They just need to be increased. Peaks yes. at twenty goes down over time, and again significant decrease you know, after the age of 60, 75. So it goes down quite a bit. I think another question we get often, um, whether that is from comments in our podcast or from patients is, how do I naturally increase my growth hormone? So of course, when we're prescribing peptides, we also talk about how to support what we're Mm -hmm. prescribing to help naturally increase your own. So good sleep. Sleep hygiene is so important for so many things, um, including growth hormone. Mm -hmm. Regular exercise is another one. Nutrition. Nutrition, yeah. Intermittent fasting. Yeah. Huge way. Well, and again, we are huge on there is no magic pill. There's no magic injection. You have to do the work as well. So you have to be eating healthy. You have to be sleeping. You have to decrease your alcohol intake. You have to be exercising. So you have to do your part. There is no magic pill out there anywhere. No. And this just just helps you meet those those goals. It helps kind of give you a little extra to meet those goals. Yeah. So sweating helps increase growth hormone. Yes, absolutely. That's a big one. That's huge. So if you're not working out, you're probably not sweating. (laughs) Correct. And so saunas, infrareds to hot yoga, like anything that even increases your body heat and sweating is is an improvement. Again, the things we don't think about with both testosterone and growth hormone optimization is even mood. So when we're talking about growth hormone optimization, Mm -hmm. does everything testosterone does it better, decreasing the fat, like we talked about, increasing muscle mass, lipid profiles improve, insulin sensitivity. You know, we talked about recovery, libido, brain fog, energy, but mood Mood. and depression, you know, it's a life force. And again, growth hormone kind of like is central to lots of different hormones and hormonal control. So if we can optimize that as we get older, and again, peaks at 20 and goes down. So by 40 or 50, when we're starting to notice, you know, body composition changes, Changes. fat above the knees, behind here with women, behind the arms, you know, and they just have, you know, we have more cellulite, we have just body composition changes. Like, of course, we have less muscle mass. But even just the subtle changes that happen with skin and fat. for Even women. though we're working out and eating well. Correct. So. Yeah. And so and we hear that all the time. We're doing all the same things. We're working out. But I know, gained 10 pounds. But or I gained I can't, 10 pounds. I can't, I'm what, eating what, the same What happened stuff. here? What is this? Yes. Or what is this? Why yeah. did this show up? Yeah. I mean, it's <laughs> all the same. Yeah. yeah, it's the same thing. So if you sit women around the room, they say the same things. And so optimizing growth hormone in addition to optimizing hormones. So we're all about cell health and optimizing the cell health. So yes. that's not like optimizing growth hormone or using a peptide, but you're not eating and exercising and doing hormonal optimization first. Exactly. So you have to do it all together. It's comprehensive and you have to do your part. So Absolutely. I think we covered most. So I will just say that like Samorlin was the first generation and that affected um, cortisol and prolactin. So we have never really used that here. CJC-1295 is second generation growth hormone peptide and we pair it with epimorlin. So they both increase mm-hmm. the, and it's in one injection. And is third, third generation. generation. It definitely mm-hmm. has its uh, benefits when you can get it. <laughs> yes, it's been hard to get recently. And definitely I think men with metabolic syndrome, which we've done another podcast on. So that central obesity, um, is helpful, mm-hmm. you know, and visceral fat is another big one for Tessa yeah. but, but it's, it is very hard to get and it is much more expensive. So, and it's not something you want to, 
to stay on indefinitely. Yes. It is one that does need to be rotated. Yeah. Um, so very important if you are looking into that peptide um, to really talk to someone, see a provider that really knows how to prescribe um, because you can do some damage. Yes, absolutely. Just like with any medications, too much of a good thing is just too much. Yeah. <laughs> and that one does sustain a little bit, which is why we don't want it. And it's just not natural, not physiologic, but decrease sugar intake when you're doing peptides, because absolutely. if you have insulin spikes, it negates the effects of it. Um, you know, dosing again is specific per your provider, how much milligram, how many milligrams are in the vial, yes, what you're reconstituting it <laughs> and what dose it is. That's all prescriber dependent. It's very important. You get these from reliable sources, you know, FDA approved pharmacies and prescribers that are very familiar and trained in peptide prescribing. So yes. don't get them off the internet. You don't know what you're injecting into your body. And that's our opinion. And there are some people that will disagree with that opinion. Yeah. But we've had patients that have come to us um, that have either been on a product through us and then have left and bought it elsewhere mm -hmm. and then see a decline in their mm -hmm. um, overall health and then they come back. And then we've had others that have come to us and have tried mm -hmm. others and said, hey, this is way different than anything I've ever done before. And now I'm seeing progress that I never saw before. And I was using it for years from an online source. Yes. So we see both sides of that. But we do believe that to when we're talking about peptides and we're talking about any compound, the powder that is used, the quality of the powder is so important. Peptides the should not be purity. any purity. Yeah, exactly. Peptides should not be any other color but white. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, that is pretty important. Um, so definitely it all um, really matters. Well, and again, I mean, anything that says, you know, experimental, not even for animals, you know, and anything you're injecting into your body, we strongly believe that you should do a lot of research on the company and the product and definitely be prescribed and comfortable because every medical procedure, you know, and every, you know, prescribed medication or, or peptide or substance has you know, some pros and cons and, and contraindications and indications and all that. So definitely be followed by a physician and have everything prescribed and um, directed by the provider and likewise reliable FDA approved sources. So otherwise, if you guys have any questions, let us know. Uh, we are, we'll cover peptides in the upcoming podcast because we're just going to re address and revisit some past peptides and then yes. we even have some new ones you know that we'll talk about so again let us know yeah. drop a comment on anything you might want to hear more about and like subscribe hit the bell share with friends sharing is caring yes absolutely so we're here to deep dive into anything peptides wellness aesthetic sexual wellness and here just to revitalize your look your health and your sex life